Hi, this is Dr. Torino, faculty uh, in the ultrasound department here at EVMS with an ultrasound sound bite for you covering the aorta. And so we're going to talk about some focused evaluation of the aorta and we're going to discuss um, your machine setup and patient setup and acquisition of your images as well as a few uh, pearls and pitfalls. The purpose for assessing an aorta is primarily to rule out an abdominal aortic aneurysm which would typically be a fusiform aneurysm and would typically be found in the distal aorta or to ruling out a dissecting aneurysm which generally occur in the thoracic aorta but do occasionally reach as far distally as the abdominal aorta where we have seen them on occasion. You're going to uh, enter your uh, patient information uh, as a kind of standard format which is going to have an anatomy identifier plus the course you're in. The probe is typically going to be curved linear, although a phased array would be acceptable. You would have to uh, pay attention to your near zone. You might get a little more noise from a phased array. And you would not want to set any of your scanning uh, controls like depth, gain, or focal zone really until you have begun scanning. And as the aorta changes its depth, in the body, uh, you're going to be changing some of those settings uh, continually. Patient position pretty much is going to be supine. Sometimes a semi-erect uh, can help drop some of the uh, gas out of your way and uh, you can have somebody lean up on their elbows or actually sit up. Um, that can be of medium help. Uh, but typically probe marker to the head for a sagittal view of the aorta and then transducer marker to the patient's right for a transverse view. And then you're going to be heel toeing, sweeping, um, pivoting, and rotating. For labeling, you're going to, in your patient tab, label uh, gallbladder or aorta and then your course. And on the image itself, in the black portions that don't have image on them, you're going to include your last name, your ID, and again, an anatomic identifier. Additionally, for this lab, if it were an active scanning lab, we'd be identifying IVC, aorta, and for aorta, we'd be measuring it. So as we measure and evaluate aorta, some things that I want to talk about. I want to make sure that you confirm your anatomy. And on this video, I want you to notice that I'm sliding between the right-sided IVC and the left-sided aorta. And they are um, significantly different and I will show them to you in live scan in a moment. And so here is aorta uh, to, and here is IVC. And you're going to see that they look uh, quite different in a normal patient, that distinction might be more difficult uh, to identify if there is some pathology. So I'm going to just move to my next slide and we're talking about acoustic windows here. So all of this scanning was done at a sub a subxiphoid, an abdominal uh, window beginning very subxiphoid, quite superiorly, just left of midline. Typically you're going to use either a deep held inspiration or a pooch the belly from your patient. And as you look at the aorta, you're going to rock and slide and look and rock and slide and look. 
and I'd like to go uh, to scanning now to show you what we're going to do. So as I unfreeze my machine and just start with controls however they are, in order to make my first decision, I'm going to say big breath in and hold it please. And the first thing I'm going to note is I need more depth. So I'm going to increase my depth. And the next thing I'm going to note is that I'm going to drop my focal zone because focal zone should be deep to the anatomy of interest. Breathe. Big breath in and hold it, please. And now, starting very superiorly at subxiphoid, I'm going to the right side of the body and I'm looking at IVC. Right renal artery posterior pierces the diaphragm. And then I'm going to rock to the left and here we come to aorta. No vessels posterior, has anterior branching and it sits completely posterior to the diaphragm. Breathe please. Big breath in. Sonographically, when we talk about the aorta, we break the aorta up into a proximal, which runs from diaphragm to the origin of SMA. We break it up into a mid aorta, which sits along the length of the SMA. And then moving towards the belly button, you get to the distal aorta, which is inferior to the SMA. Distal aorta is where most aneurysms will occur. Breathe, please. The reason mid aorta is also of interest to you, even though most aneurysms don't occur here, breath in, please, is when you look at this SMA origin, you can know that your renal arteries originate just about a centimeter from there. So when you look at mid aorta, you have a sense that uh, the renal arteries are probably doing okay. Breathe. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to rotate my probe 90 degrees so that I'm in transverse plane now. I'm going to still be starting quite superior. Big breath in, please. And I'm going to angle slightly superior. And then, sorry, I'm going to see proximal aorta, mid aorta right here along SMA, and then distal aorta. Look at the shadow from bowel right at midline. So I can come, I moved over to the patient's right side a little bit. I'm angling to the right a bit, breathe and relax and take in a big breath. Now as I'm looking at distal aorta, it's moving more superficially in the body and I'm going to raise my focal zone one and then I'm going to keep sliding inferiorly, moving a little side to side as I try to capture the bifurcation of the aorta. So I want to be able to follow aorta and I'm, I'm right there, but it's difficult to see. One and two. So I go from one aorta to two different iliac vessels here. And let's see if I can, oh, I can see it a little better if I angle inferiorly now here are my two iliac arteries coming in. Now breathe. The other thing I want to remind you of is that an aorta naturally tapers. So if I were to look at this aorta and measure it, and this proximal aorta measures 1.7 centimeters. So we're going to keep that in mind. I'm going to move down here to distal aorta and I'm going to freeze an image and I'm going to measure it again. Now this aorta distally has tapered and now it measures 1.53 centimeters and that's normal. Both measurements are within normal limits and there has been tapering. 
But if we had gotten to distal aorta and it still measured 1.7 centimeters, even though it's less than the upper limits of normal, if there's no tapering, the aorta is still considered to be aneurysmally dilated. So keep that in mind. Now, we've asked you to measure in a transverse scan plane. So I'm gonna rotate my probe back to that transverse so we can get this image. And if I select my image at mid aorta, then I'm gonna have a nice round aorta and a nice SMA. And I'd like you to please take in a breath and hold it. And breathe. Now I want you to notice that my image is not centered as nicely as I would like to have it. And that is because I moved to the right side of the patient and I angled to the left to look under the stomach. So when I measure this aorta now in transverse, I'm gonna use two sets of calipers and correctly setting your calipers for the aorta means that you're gonna set them outer to outer. What you have to remember is that if the wall of an artery is aneurysmally compromised, the wall itself is, becomes part of the aneurysm. And so you need to include that uh, and it needs to be outer to outer. So here's mid aorta and I'm gonna unfreeze and I'm gonna say, take in a big breath and hold it please. And I'm gonna slide inferiorly. And breathe. Now you can see I've changed the centering of my image a little bit. I actually went over to patient's left and angled to the right. So now I'm at distal aorta. There's no branching visible, but I'm going to I'm going to measure this and I'm going to go outer to outer and activating my second caliber, outer to outer medial to lateral as well. You would only um, be required to do one locational measurement, but I wanted to show you the location for each of them because the truth is, uh, although we might specifically ask you to look at mid or distal, uh, if you had to choose one, distal is your best, your best bet. The reason I like mid is your access to renal arteries. So I would like to take this minute to just go back to our notes for our last few slides. So I talked uh, to you a little bit while I was scanning about the division of the aorta into proximal, mid, and distal segments. Again, why do we look at mid? We look at mid because it gives you indirect information about the health of the renal arteries. And in Hampton Roads, we have one of the highest populations with that uh, deal with poorly controlled hypertension and diabetes. And those renal arteries are at great risk. But where do most AAAs occur? They occur in the distal aorta. Artifacts. These are artifacts that would occur in primarily anechoic or cystic structures. So you might get some anterior cystic noise. You might actually see a duplication artifact. And I wonder if we could scan again for just a moment so that I could see if we could find a duplication artifact. I might not be able to get one, but I might. So a duplication artifact occurs when you scan both sides of a rectus muscle at the same time, pooch out your belly, make a big fat belly, and, no, a beautiful scan window, but no duplication artifact. All right, I'm sorry, I'm gonna go back to my notes. So you're gonna look for kind of standard artifacts. 
Uh, and your artifact snapshot is of a duplication artifact. So a duplication artifact only is seen midline in the body. It's almost always seen because of the paired rectus abdominis muscles. And sound comes in through both rectus muscles and changes both directions and puts your real structure right next to an artifactual structure. The way you get rid of this artifact is you move. You must move your transducer uh, to one side or the other to get off of that midline. Uh, but chances are your patient does not have two SMAs. And then my last uh, slide for you in these notes is your SPI snapshot. And today it's about refraction. Beam refraction occurs when the sound encounters a change in speed as it travels through different tissues. And we see this clinically as a duplication artifact or as a refractive shadowing, edge shadowing. And items that occur because of refraction are always seen next to the real structure. There's a rule, there's a law, a physics principle that guides this whole process called Snell's Law. And Snell's Law tells us that the angle that sound goes into the body divided by the angle that sound comes out of the body equals the first speed divided by the second speed. What do you take away from that? If there's a change in speed, we have beam refraction. And here is uh, just a snapshot of your required image with measurements, knowing that the aorta is always less than three centimeters and calibers are set outer to outer. And that is it for me, Dr. Torino out with your sono bites from EVMS. You will find some scanning instruction cards on Blackboard which will help you with your focally based protocol. Thank you from the ultrasound team here at EVMS.